Welcome to the College for America, the Forbidden Body Exhibit, Masterpieces by Donatello, Rembrandt Vengeance, Peter Paul Rubin, Jacques Louise Davis, Manet, and Picasso. Welcome to Donatello's David. Donatello's David was painted between 1440 and 1460. The medium for the statue is bronze and copper. The expressive content for this is set in the early Renaissance. The Florentine people were a republic and their constitution limited power over the nobility and laborers, which ensured that not one entity had complete power over the people. The political power belonged to the middle class at that time. During this time pe period, the Florentine people found themselves with a lot of wealth and because of this, the people started to acquire the finer things in life. In the 1400s, the people were in a desperate struggle with the Duke of Milan, and they felt they were going to lose the liberties that they once had. Fortunately, the Duke died because of the plague in 1402, and the people looked at it as a sign that God was looking at them with favor. The work had been commissioned by Pasco di Mendici for the Palazzo Mendici during the mid 15th century. The statue is placed in the courtyard of Mendici Palace where people could see it from the street, which I'm sure gave the people a sense of pride. The sculpture was the first nude since classical antiquity. This theme being the historical David and Goliath battle. The statue's medium was made using bronze and copper and was hollow, and at this time was a very hard technique to do, but was becoming popular with among certain artists. David was a life-size sculpture. The composition of David is the focal point as he stood with one foot on the head of Goliath. According to the context of biblical records, David flung a stone from his slingshot that struck the Philistine Goliath in the head, and if you look in his left hand, you'll see the rock clenched in his fist. David is depicted here as a youth and not the usual older king of biblical times. During this time, of the early Renaissance, the body was to be celebrated. And this return to Greece for the love of body was clearly shown here in the sculpture. We see David standing erect with one foot on the head of Goliath. He's holding Goliath's sword in his hand, clearly showing his strength. David wore a soft hat instead of the war helmet that was customary when you went to war. The soft hat on David's head was a symbol of peace to the Florentine, the people of Florence. The soft hat really envisioned the Republic of Florence and their seeking peace. And to the Florentine people, David symbolized that freedom. Next along our journey, we come to Rembrandt's Van Ringen's The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Tulip. It was painted in 1632. Oil on canvas is the medium used on this painting. The subject matter for this painting was the commission that Rembrandt was given to paint portraits of the Amsterdam Surgeons Guild in a broke style of drama, which is now known as the anatomy lesson 
of Dr. Tuller. Rembrandt came from Protestant Holland, where he did not receive commissions from the church to do painting. Instead, he was able to do commissions like the one he did here for Dr. Tuller. This lecture of anatomy occurred on the 16th of January, 1632. As we examine the composition of this portrait closely, Dr. Tulip is the focal point and his colleagues are gathered closely around him. Onlookers and the facial expressions are intrigued with the lesson at hand. And here you really can see their expressions that they're learning and by the look of some of them as if they're taking notes. You see the back of people's heads like you're standing behind them in the room listening and observing this lesson. Depending on how much money you paid determined where you were placed in this painting. You really get a sense of science when you look at the cadaver and the tint of paleness of his skin. And it really leads to that lifelike attribute to this portrait. And the expression on the doctor's face, you see how well he is trying to get his point across to them. You can see the really fine details on the hands of the doctor. The background has a hue of very dark muted colors and it brings your focus to the examination table in Dr. Tulip. This portrait is a very complex piece. Let's continue on to the next exhibit. Peter Paul Rubens' Elevation of the Cross, painted in 1610 through 1611. Oil on wood is the composition for this portrait. Peter Paul Rubens' Elevation of the Cross was an introduction of the Baroque style into Northern art. The subject matter of this piece was initiated by the commission to Reuben by the Catholic Church to paint the elevation of the cross. Reuben's Jesus on the cross was a massive 15 feet by 11 feet wide painting on wood that stretched across three panels and sat in the church of St. Walpurgis on the altar of Antwerp. To the very right on the third panel, you see the Roman officers on horseback, while the two thieves can, are being executed in the background of the picture. The panel all the way to your left, you see Mary and a group of women and children crying and mourning as they watch the cross being raised. The composition is at an angle and the painting is full of vibrant colors. You see the people in this painting struggling to place the cross in an upright position and their bodies are intertwined as they look almost as one figure. The people are very muscular and their bodies almost look like they illuminate off of the painting. The expressions of struggle was on the people's faces and you see Jesus looking up almost like he's saying a prayer to God where he's asking for their forgiveness because they don't know what they are doing. You get a strong sense of intense emotion throughout all three paintings and the detail is amazing. As we continue, I'd like to bring your attention to The Oath of the Harati by Jacques-Louis David, painted in 1784. Oil on canvas was the medium used here. The expressive content for this painting was a story of warfare between two cities, Young Rome and the city of Alba in 669 BC. This picture was commissioned by the King of France and placed in the Louvre in 1785, four years before the revolution. The subject matter of this painting is about two cities who continually are going to war and instead of going to war all the time, they pick three combatants to fight for the city on each side. The Harati brothers in this picture are swearing an oath that they will fight on their city's behalf. This picture shows 
a family willing to die for their country. And on the other side of the picture, one of the Harati sisters who is mourning her brother going into battle, but she is also mourning her husband who is going to war against her brother from another city. After returning from battle, one of the Harati brothers returned to see his sister mourning the loss of her husband. He then killed her because he had thought she should not be mourning his loss. This really shows that the family is secondary over country. This picture was painted in Rome and David has captured that Roman feel. You get a sense of sacrifice and dramatic lighting that highlights the combatants, is stunning and has such unity. The painting looked like it came right off a Roman artifact. He captured young Rome so well. In this painting, David introduced a new kind of behavior, the virtue for country over family. The painting really lent to David's popularity at the time and truly captured that love for country being portrayed here. Let's move on to our next piece, Monet's Olympia, painted 1863. Oil on canvas was the medium used. First displayed in the courtesan in 1865. Monet was commissioned by France. The piece had the stamp of the state on it. The subject matter for this was a prostitute and what seems to be here, her parlor. We see with this work, Monet was really challenging the expected idea. As we examine Olympia, she doesn't have the perfection of a Venus would have. And you see that in the placement of her eyes, where you see a slight difference in them. Her position, though, was a coy way, as Venus is and was usually pictured. Olympia is looking at us like we just walked into a room and her gaze is intense. Olympia was a common name for a prostitute in Paris at the time. If you look at the painting, you'll see a servant holding flowers and by the looks of the cat, we startled them by their our appearance. You really get a sense of just walking in on this high-priced prostitute and interrupting her by the transitions of shading of her hands from light to dark brings attention to her sexuality even the positioning of her hands shows her sexuality the stare from olympia is intense this new painting caused quite a commotion due to the content and subject of the painting that they had to place guards next to it minet is really inventing art for the modern world here as you can see, even by the subject that he chose to paint. Now we have come to our last piece in the collection, Picasso's Les Damsels de Avion. Painted in 1907, oil on canvas was the medium used here. Les Damsels de Avion is the beginning of modern art. The subject of the painting was women in a brothel. They say in this painting, it looked as if it was a laboratory where Picasso just threw everything in it. Picasso portrays five women inside a brothel. The original sketch of the picture had a medical student there to check the ladies for diseases, but was later removed from it when he painted the portrait. When you look at the painting, it looks as if they're undressing before you. Picasso's figures look as if they're shattered glass. They look sharp and dangerous. The facial expressions here are not welcoming. They look embedded into the ground. The lady looking through the curtain gives a sense of illusion. It gives us a feeling of moving through the space. It's a very large and life-size piece. 
the figure with the African mask on, identify with a primitive sexuality. He's trying to have society go back to a pr primitive society that shows a primitive sexuality. The head to the left is from Portugal or Spain and gives a European feel. It is said that this was Picasso's response to Matisse's Joy of Life painting. And when painting it, he kept it hidden. These women here shows how these women had such power over him. Picasso would quite often go to the brothels, as he admitted, and he definitely captured that sense of danger as we look at these ladies. If we examine both Manet's Olympia and Picasso's Les Denzels de Avion, the subject matter of both pieces are very similar since prostitutes were the subjects of both pieces. Both pieces' mediums were both oil on canvas. And we are sh sure that Picasso is fully aware of the similarities that we see from each piece. This theme of the prostitutes is a very taboo subject and caused a commotion during the release to the public. Both pictures similarly depict the ladies' hands shaded. And the style of painting is completely different and where Monet has a more classical composition to it, and Picasso has an abstract look to his, you can't help but notice these women must have had some kind of hold over them. Thank you for walking through our exhibit today and enjoying our lovely pieces of art.